Hello, hello, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of the Staffish International podcast, also known as Dego. And if you're wondering what Dego is, it's a wall of word meaning mutual understanding, also known as coming together and um, discussing issues that are affecting us as young people, and most importantly, coming up with solutions that will solve these social issues that are affecting us. My name is Maria Dabo, and I am your host for this show, and I hope you enjoyed. But I'm not here alone. I have two beautiful guests with me, two beautiful ladies, and they're here representing the youth, and they are going to share their experiences about the topic of discussion, which is about womanhood. Uh, we all know it's the Women's History Month, and we are going to be talking about womanhood. We are going to define womanhood and what it means to us as young people. And um, so without wasting much of your time, I'm going to introduce my guest speakers. Um, on my right, I have Miss Maria Mokali. Um, she's an actress and a youth leader who is very committed to serving her country. And on my left, I have Miss Awachan. She is a Kids Program Coordinator at Stavish International, also a mentor to many, and she's been very dedicated to serving her community as well. And now I'm going to allow them to share um, their names as well and tell us a little bit about who they are and their hobbies. Let's start with Miss Kali. Welcome to the Stavish Podcast. Thank you so much, Mariama. I'm really honored to be here today. I'm a huge fan of Stavish. <laughs> so I'm really honored to be on this platform. Like she mentioned, my name is Mariama Kuli. I am an award-winning actress. I am a radio presenter with Afri Radio, where I host a mentorship program called The Let's Talk Show, mm -hmm. where I was honored to have some of your members and, of course, Auntie Mami Asin and a lot more to mm -hmm. share their life journeys and to, you know, serve as mentors and share their experiences as well and some of their challenges. Mm -hmm. um, I am also an activist for women and girls' rights in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. And yes, basically, that's what I do. I have my own company, which is a baby company. I don't talk about it a lot, <laughs> but I know most of you have come across it, which is um, Studio 411. Mm -hmm. It's a production company that I established with my friend called Christopher T. Jan Smith. Mm -hmm. So we were able to work on so many successful movies from the Gambia here, mm -hmm. ranging from Gifts from Babylon, mm -hmm. uh, from Baby and we've done a lot of productions in collaborations with Ibunjan Theatre, which mm -hmm. is the only theatre in the Gambia. Yes. <laughs> so yes, really happy to be here and excited. Welcome <laughs> and thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you. Um, Ms. Awachan. Okay, uh, Asalaamu Alaikum everyone. Uh, like Mariama rightly said, uh, my name is Awachan. I'm a mentor here at Staffers International. Uh, I've been with the program for the past six years and uh, because of my passion for working with children, I'm the one that is heading the kids program here at Starfish and mm -hmm. over the years we've produced uh, and helped nurture young children who mm -hmm. are now teenagers are in the Starfish program as Starfish students. Mm -hmm. uh, so we work with these kids basically to help them uh, with their study classes. Not only that, we also uh, do extracurricular activities such as uh, music and dance, poetry mm -hmm. and drama, mm -hmm. all of which are geared towards helping the students find their voices and be able to uh, speak for themselves uh, mm -hmm. and share things that are they're dealing with or also express um, things that they're passionate about to their parents in a respectful manner as well. Mm -hmm. Because we understand uh, specific areas where as a young child, if you do certain things and it's not in line with your cultural practices, mm -hmm. uh, the parents tend to dissuade that child from uh, going forward for that. And right. so we want to help the students be able to understand that uh, they should not limit themselves to one thing mm -hmm. and that whatever they set their minds to, they will be able to achieve it in the long run if they have the right uh, family support and guidance uh, with friends and uh, uh, people that are vested in their growth as well. All right, I have two powerful women with me here. And I think that is the goal of these discussions and conversation. Uh, we are not just contributing to the discussions of the society, but we are also sharing our experiences and coming up with solutions to these social issues. And like I said, the topic of discussion for today is defining womanhood. And today, this month is a month of women, and we want to honor women and also talk about ourselves and honor ourselves as well. So um, the first question I'm going to ask is, who is a woman? 
I think it's important that we, we, we define what womanhood is and who a woman is before we go um, further into the discussion. And Ms. Kelly, do you like to share something about that? Well, that's an interesting question because most of the time, I don't think we ask ourselves who really we are. Mm -hmm. And as women, do we even question who we are? Because uh, obviously the universe has made us to identify our sexes before anything else. Right. And for me, when, uh, when we talk about womanhood and who a woman is, obviously I, the first thing that comes to my mind is a woman is... She's, she's precious, she's a gold, like she's right. silver, she's gold. She's, mm -hmm. she's someone who is uh, worth being treasured. Mm -hmm. Like women should be treasured yeah. because we're special. Yeah. We are unique. God made us in a very beautiful, unique way. We are different. Mm -hmm. uh, God also made us as women to be bold, mm -hmm. you know, to be strong. Because I think when God was making us, he knew we were coming to a world that would require us to be strong, to be able to handle and deal with all the challenges the world is throwing to us. Yeah. And obviously for me, that's how I see women. They, are, they should be treasured. Mm -hmm. women, sh women are bold. They are strong. They are beautiful. Mm -hmm. They are the most wonderful creatures that I think God has made. And for me, that is how I define women. Like, this is who we are. Mm -hmm. We are the universe's most treasured human. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That is beautiful. We are precious. Please remember that we are precious. And I think, I like the way you put it. I think, um, well, first of all, we are human beings. <laughs> and then uh, we are different uh, and we, we are prepared for all the struggles and um, all the obstacles that we, we are going to face on this art. So don't fear us, respect us, and um, keep us um, protected. Um, so Ms. Awacham, um, let's talk about the joy of womanhood. I know we, know, we all know there are a lot of struggles of being a woman, but there are also a lot of blessing and joy of being a woman. Um, I don't know if you can identify some of these blessings for us and then we can get into the discussion. So uh, there are boundless joys of being a woman. Um, first of all, we're limitless beings. Uh, mm -hmm. People try to put us in a box and like specify the things that we fit into in society from mm -hmm. a very early age. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at it, uh, women are a mind rich of gems. And so they are diversified beings who can be at any position or any place and be outstanding in it. Mm -hmm. So um, when we are growing up, our families will tend to make us believe that a woman should be somebody who uh, prepare for a home later as a wife, as somebody's mm -hmm. wife as yeah. somebody's mother, mm -hmm. right? But then uh, women should not be just limited to that. Yeah. Like we can be, when you look at all of the successful people right, right now, if they tell you they're God and a truth, it was because they were inspired by a woman or they were advised by a woman who was there by their side, supporting their every dream as they work towards their journey and finally made it out there in the world. Mm -hmm. So we are not just nurturers, we are compassionate beings. Uh, our mind is beautiful. Like we can think on our feet and we can do multiple tasks at once. We're yep. not just limited to one thing. Mm -hmm. So when you find us in our homes, an example of that is our mothers. Mm -hmm. They can be breastfeeding a child, carrying a child while doing it. They're cooking a meal for the family. Mm -hmm. uh, while doing it, they're trying to make sure that the other child who is not uh, being breastfed mm -hmm. is also uh, being safe as they're going about their journeys. Yeah. So uh, when you look at it, those are the things that we are. and. Um, we can fit into every place that we go into. And so as women out there, we should not limit ourselves to one thing. We should be able to uh, explore all the potentials that we have within us and also inspire other people to do the same as well. All right, you've heard our chat well. Um, we should not limit ourselves to anything. And I just want to remind you all of this famous quotation that, or saying, we all usually hear people say, behind every successful man, there is a strong woman behind. We are going for a short commercial break and we're going to hear a staff student recite a poem about motherhood. And when we come back, we will discuss more about defining womanhood. Stay tuned, don't go away. Hello, my name is Aisha Swa. And my poem is entitled, 
a woman's worth, and it goes. She gave life, she is a wife. She is a mother and she is a friend. She is a sister, a survivor till the end. Appreciate her, we don't dare. Ask her worries, we don't care. Wipe away her tears, they are invisible as air. She walks, cooks and cleans. She laughs, helps comfort and hides her pain. When you struggle, she pulls you through. All this is her and what do we do? Complain and create a mess. Provide stress and leave her feeling depressed. Push her away and ignore her advice. Tell her she's nothing without thinking twice. She was raped, tortured and abused. Told she was nothing and will always be useless for pleasure. Forgets her pain. She swallows her pride. Put her feelings aside. Thus, as you need in order for you to be free. Ignores your ignorance and tolerates your flaws. You call her names, but she answers with pride, dignity, and a complete loss of self. You call her nothing. I call her strong, smart, caring, loving, and powerful. I call her a woman. Thank you. Welcome back everyone to the Staffish International podcast series and today we are talking about womanhood. We are basically defining what womanhood is and before we went for a short break, our chair was giving us uh, 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 a little bit about the joy of womanhood and now we are going to talk about what qualities makes up a woman. We cannot really talk about who a woman is without talking about the things that makes up woman and Miss Kali is going to tell us um, some of the qualities and virtues she thinks a woman should embody. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think a woman can have any qualities she feels comfortable in. I, I, most of the time we allow society to define what type of qualities we're supposed to have as women mm -hmm. and how we're supposed to behave, how we're supposed to comport ourselves, how mm -hmm. we're supposed to look, how we're even supposed to talk, right. <laughs> which shouldn't be right. I mean, I keep saying, mm -hmm. be who you are, however comfortable you are. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you want to be a Tom girl, be a Tom girl. <laughs> you are still a woman. Yep. That is what you're comfortable being. Mm -hmm. If you want to be, you know, all the models, beautiful looking women, mm -hmm. be it because that is what you want to be. Mm -hmm. But more or less, I mean, uh, for me, when I look at myself or other women, I think as women, we need to be bold. We need to be outspoken. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't allow any situation or society to mute us about right. what we want, mm -hmm. how we want it, when we want it, and where we want it. Mm -hmm. Speak your mind as much as you can. Don't allow anybody to shut you off or to shoot you. Mm -hmm. Be loud. Use your voice to express yourself. Mm -hmm. Look however you want to look because we've come to that age and time where women are always pressured or blamed mm -hmm. for how they dress and how right. they look. And mm -hmm. that is why we are falling victims of sexual harassment yeah. or whatsoever that happens to us. Mm -hmm. When really, we, should, we shouldn't we should feel uncomfortable or feel scared to go out mm -hmm. however we want to. We should yeah. be feeling safe in our own country, in our yeah. own space mm -hmm. and in our own environment, mm -hmm. however we, we go out yeah. or however we dress. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, just be yourself. That's all I would say. Be mm -hmm. yourself. Don't allow society to put so much pressure on who you should be. Mm -hmm. Just be yourself. Right. <laughs> I, I love that. It's interesting that you did not give any specific qualities of um, what a woman should be like or who a woman should be like. And I think that is very important. Yeah, because at the end of the day, I don't want any woman or little girl watching me today to mm -hmm. feel pressured that, okay, yeah. these are the this qualities the I, have have I have to have. This is how I need mm -hmm. to be to be yeah. a woman or to mm -hmm. be a girl. Mm -hmm. No, be whoever you want to be. Right? <laughs> that, that, that is beautiful. I mean, um, I think I the part where you said, be bold, be yourself, and be you. That is it. And if you have all of those in you, then you are a woman, and you're going to rock your world the way you want it. Um, so we're going to come back to our charm again, and this time she's going to tell us um, what she treasures the most as a woman. We've talked about the joy of being a woman. Now, what is one thing? If Oh, it's many, actually. There are a lot of things to honor and appreciate about being a woman, but just tell us a few things that you treasure mostly about yourself. Okay, so uh, the number one thing I think I like treasure as a woman is mm -hmm. our strength. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, being able to endure a lot of the things that comes our way from society, from even our, within our own family members mm -hmm. as well. Right. Uh, we are overcomers. Mm -hmm. We don't give up easily and say, okay, I've fallen down. Let me just stay on the ground. And that is it. Mm -hmm. We pick our, dust ourselves up and then we get up and we keep striving for what we believe in. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing. Uh, the other thing is that we are loving beings. We are mm -hmm. very compassionate beings. We are sensing beings that uh, when somebody is going through something, mm -hmm. uh, we can feel that and we're able to be there for that person and help them get through that moment. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is that, uh, so uh, let's say we sacrifice ourselves for mm -hmm. other people. Yeah. In every situation, when you look at our mothers, uh, they don't have time for themselves most of the time because mm -hmm. they're worried about what their children are going to eat, uh, mm -hmm. what are they going to dress, or right. what is the next meal for tomorrow, mm -hmm. or um, like their school and everything regarding their health and well-being. Mm -hmm. For example, when a child is sick, that mother doesn't care about anything else. Mm -hmm. She's just focused on how do I make sure that my child regains their health mm -hmm. and is able to go forward and do the stuff that they uh, want to do or can do to move forward in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so I think those three things, there are more, but then yeah. those three things stood out for me and they're very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, being the fact that we can be all of those things and more is something that I truly treasure as a a uh, woman that is going into become herself and finding mm -hmm. who she is and her strengths every day as yeah. I live my life and experience certain things as, in my journey as well. All right, thank you. And at this point, I just want to say shout outs to all the mothers in the world. Um, you are all sheroes and superwomen and you're doing a great job out there. And um, I think at this point, we should try to um, look into the cultural aspect of becoming a woman um, even though it's very important to be who we are and um, but there are some factors around us that have contributed to making us who we are as women or they've influenced us and to some point to becoming who we are um, now let's look at the cultural influence of our lives as women you know what lessons would you say your culture have taught you Mariama, mm -hmm. about being a woman I think my culture has really taught me to fight twice harder than any other gender um, as, as a woman growing up in a cultured home or in a cultured country or society, mm -hmm. you're always expected to do way better. Yeah. You're expected to be better mm -hmm. as a human as well. So I think that is one thing that my culture has left me with. And the fact that um, most of our cultures they didn't favor us as mm -hmm. women or yeah. as girls, mm -hmm. it has brought in a lot of emotional trauma that has turned into strength and mm -hmm has turned into lessons that we don't want it to continue with our next generation or with our children. Mm -hmm. So it has taught us to be more protective, to be more defensive mm -hmm. and uh, to stand out more for what we want because we keep demanding. Yeah. We keep demanding because we don't have what we want. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that is what our culture or my culture has really taught me as a woman to mm -hmm. keep demanding for what I want. No, yeah. I don't want it this way. I want it that way. Mm -hmm. So for me, on the other hand, we would say it has brought in some negative impacts. But on the other side, it has taught us to be even stronger, mm -hmm. to be wiser and to be more vigilant. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are always vigilant about how safe we are mm -hmm. at this particular time, at this yeah. you know, particular time, right. how safe are our children at mm -hmm. this particular time or wherever they might be. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, it has really left me to be really strong. Yeah. Yep. So uh, the culture have a huge role to play, but I think um, us as women, we have to decide um, what we want to take in and what we want to leave out. Not all of these practices are good. Some of the cultural practices kind of influence us negatively. Yeah. So we have to decide, do we want to choose the positive one or the negative one? And I like that you said, uh, we use all of these force to, as an energy, as a form of a strength to be able to fight twice as harder and go for what we want. Obviously, there are a lot of struggles of being a woman. There are a lot of struggles and challenges we all fight through every day to be where we are today. But um, well, I don't know, what are those for you? What will you say? So this is just going back to the social norm that women are supposed to fit in a certain frame mm -hmm. of life. And so when you look at uh, the Gambia, generally, a woman is considered most of the time somebody who is uh, dressed in a certain way. Let's say you have to uh, have 
a gram or where mm-hmm. a dagget that is jut and mm-hmm. then uh, have certain features and then you're considered a woman. Mm-hmm. But not everybody is gifted equally in certain ways. God, when he was uh, creating us, created mm-hmm. us in different shapes and sizes. Mm-hmm. And we have different preferences as we grow up into society. Yeah. So for example, just today, as I was coming to Starfish, mm-hmm. I met a... Uh, Several kids, they're about between the ages of nine, ten. Mm-hmm. And they all saw me because I'm tomboyish. Most of the time, <laughs> when somebody sees me mm-hmm. from afar, you're thinking, okay, that's a guy coming or that's a boy coming. Mm-hmm. So I came close to them and they were like in argument among themselves. Mm-hmm. Like I was hearing everything they're saying. And they're like, is this a guy or a woman? <laughs> and then the other one was like, no, you're stupid. This is a, this is a girl. The other wow. one was like, no, this is a boy. This mm-hmm. can definitely not be a boy. Mm-hmm. And one of them says, Let's ask her. So in my mind, I'm like, you guys are going to continue this conversation, but I'm not going to stop here to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So those are specific things. Like physically, we are expected to be a certain way Mm -hmm. because women are expected to be married and have a family and then stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to um, uh, economically, Mm -hmm. so somebody, for example, a girl is somebody that has her money and spends it on outfits and then... um, maybe ice cream and all of those things mm-hmm. and a woman is somebody who uh, will go into the society when whatever they make it goes back to their family it mm-hmm. goes back to supporting the family it goes back to uplifting the family yeah and so those are physical appearances are uh, some challenges that we face mm-hmm. and the other challenges that we face as women is also when you look at the workforce mm-hmm. uh, we're expected to not do specific areas. So, mm-hmm. for example, if I am into sports and as a woman, my family will be the very first to dissuade me and said, mm-hmm. as a woman, you cannot do this kind of sports because it's not good for you physically. Mm-hmm. It might affect you in the long run in yeah. some way. Mm-hmm. And so I, if I want to be an engineer, they're like, well, you're not too smart for this. Mm-hmm. This is some, yeah. something that a guy should be able yeah. to do. So all of those limiting things and uh, stereotypes that we grow up with uh, affects us as we grow into becoming teenagers and into adults because our self-esteem is what is at stake mm-hmm. if you don't have the right support then as a girl then you struggle with a lot of issues you yeah. struggle with your appearance when you go out mm-hmm. you're wondering okay am i good enough for this person am mm-hmm. i good enough for society or is how i'm looking the right way right now yeah and then that emotional trauma that you're going with will be there to suffocate you yeah and then if you don't have somebody that comes and steps in mm-hmm. and helps Helps guide you towards the right direction and shows you, you that might okay, be trapped in that yes, little just bag. like Mariama initially said, that mm-hmm. women are not specific. You are not just one thing. Yeah. So you are so many things, and then those things you should be able to explore those avenues and find yourself within mm-hmm. your own journey and be able to live your life to the best way mm-hmm. and not say, okay, this is society's design for me, so I have to fit into that box. Yeah. Because at the end, who are you making? I don't know proud or stuff Mm -hmm. whose peace and peace of mind is at stake is yours you're going to be the one to suffer all of those while society will be like mom they mom mom (laughs) but then do you know what that person is dealing with internally as they go through to satisfy everybody else but not themselves right i think if we want to talk about the challenges we can list and go on and on and on but i just want to end by saying um a woman can do two things who she is and who she wants to be. And it's it's a choice. And we're going to go for another short commercial break. This time we're going to hear a beautiful song from Fatale. And since we are talking about culture, this is a cultural song. And when we come back, we will wrap up and discuss more about womanhood. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Fatale. I am a staff student and I am going to sing a song. Bulldog Daligum. What a gis rek ne wow Gis the power alert Deg deg what a call Janga lichi beer Do le pulunyo rek na gum Koi le soy Ne na le swahul Jamba roi fal Wana My sabige kumba fal borom fara khadi nyamba der de mamam senja yo ndigal fal jambari khalkum jambari khalkum ni ndigalo ifal 
জবার ইসলাম নেনালে Welcome back everyone to the discussion. We hope you enjoyed the song by Miss Fatule. Um, so we're going to continue the discussion about um, defining womanhood. And um, it's really interesting. I have very brilliant, brilliant woman with me here and the discussion is very fruitful. I want to keep it going. I hope you guys still want to listen to it. Um, so we're going to discuss now is um, what my guests think about um what what do you see as the future of womanhood in the future so now we are going to we are discussing the future a little bit what do you guys see do you guys think there will be any progress about women and what we love doing and how we are treated um how is the future going to look like for us i think the future would be really bright and peaceful for women in the future mm -hmm. with the type of women I see in this generation mm -hmm. and the effort, the work that they're doing like yourselves, you know, and um, there's a lot of hope because women now know what they want. Mm -hmm. Women are educated, women are in all aspects of career professions that you would think of in mm -hmm. the world. and. Um, they are taking the lead now. Mm -hmm. We see women in politics. We yeah. see women in the House of Parliament, mm -hmm. in decision making in places where it matters mm -hmm. for us to be safe in this world and for the next generation to be safe as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm very hopeful that the more women we have coming on board, mm -hmm. each and each and all of us supporting one another mm -hmm. in what we do, I believe the future would be really bright for yeah. all of us. And that is only if we all come together and support each other and believe in each other. Mm -hmm. Now in Gambia, I mean, every day I keep saying this on my platforms, uh, especially when it comes to politics, we keep doubting if really we are ready to be leaders, mm -hmm. if really we are ready to take up the position of presidency yeah. in this country. It's mm -hmm. high time we should believe in ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've done it for men. We've campaigned for them. Yeah. We've clap and sing and cook and mobilize and right. do all the logistics, make them successful. Mm -hmm. And we are still left behind. Now, if we all join our forces and use the same energy and time like we are doing to support our men, mm -hmm. We will go really far and obviously we have women now in uh, the decision making of mm -hmm. laws yeah. and uh in all fields like yeah. i was mentioning mm -hmm. so i think the future would really be very bright if the same energy passion and um sacrifice continues we will live a very peaceful and safe world for everyone and the women in the future as well all right. Mariama thinks the future will be bright. I think that is very encouraging and I am hopeful. Let's see what our things about it. Yeah, definitely. I agree with her. Uh, the future, we are already in doing the work. We're mm -hmm. in the process of shifting uh, the mentalities of people. We're mm -hmm. in the process of uh, getting to where we want to because mm -hmm. we know uh, what our vision is. We know what we, where we want to see ourselves in the mm -hmm. future. And so not only are we doing it for ourselves, but we're doing it for other young girls and uh, women as well who mm -hmm. are growing up. So yeah. you have a lot of uh, 
women groups that are supporting another, other women to mm -hmm. uplift them to be uh, the best versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. You have women supporting girls to be uh, the best versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. And so uh, being able to recognize uh, each person's, uh, let's say, career part, your views, your potentials, mm -hmm. and what you desire for yourself. Mm -hmm. And not just short term, let's say in the next five years, but in the long run. Right. Because we want women are beings that create walls, not just for themselves, but other people. Yeah. So as we work towards that and we uh, make sure that we are centered on focused on what we what our goals are, mm -hmm. we will get there. We will surely have pushbacks because uh, pushbacks will yeah. definitely come from all sides. Mm -hmm. uh, people will tell us this is not what uh, your ancestors did, uh, mm -hmm. so you're not supposed to be doing this. Yeah. Uh, you are taking the white man's mentality yes. because uh, education <laughs> I hear that all is the time. brainwashing you. Western education, so of, Western education. Yeah, definitely. So mm -hmm. we will hear all of those things mm -hmm. and we will hear that we want to become men now. Yeah. We're no longer women. We want to become men mm -hmm. in the process of getting what we want but those are things that people will try to do or uh, struggles that they will try to put in a uh, work path to, to dissuade us from our own end, end goal mm -hmm. and so we have to be focused we have to be centered and we not just have to work individually like mm -hmm. Mariama said yeah. we have to come together as a unit uh, a stronghold that will support each other and uplift one another mm -hmm. to get to that process because yeah. we can't fight this battle alone yeah it has to be something that uh, we all collaborate on and work together mm -hmm. to strive for it so once we do that I think uh, things will be better because an educated woman will ensure that their child is educated yes and will ensure that the child uh, knows everything mm -hmm. that will harm a woman so for example all of these, uh, let's say, gender-based violences that we see, mm -hmm. if your mother or your aunt or whoever within your family, a female a relative, mm -hmm. is educated enough, then they will be able to stand as an advocate for that yep. situation. And mm -hmm. they will teach their child that, okay, these are things that are wrong and you're not supposed to direct this energy towards women. Mm -hmm. And these are things that they are right and you should try to direct this energy towards uh, women and girls. Mm -hmm. And so uh, an example of that is here at Starfish. So, for example, the boys here, they sweep as much as the girls will sweep. Yeah. Uh, when we water the plants, the boys will do the same. Initially, mm -hmm. when they come newly to the program, they will try to challenge that energy yeah. because that is not something that they, they do used to. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but then we let them know that, okay, in this space, this is not your house. Mm -hmm. And so if you had travel, let's say you travel outside of the country, you will cook for yourself before mm -hmm. you eventually get established. Yeah. You will do the laundry for yourself. So what is stopping you from doing that at home mm -hmm. with your female siblings and supporting one another to ensure that those things are not labeled as female chores and mm -hmm. male chores mm -hmm. because you will do it in eventually. So what is stopping you right now? And that mentality is where we're trying to shift, not just to let girls know that it's okay for men to help them with uh, the house chores, mm -hmm. but to help the young boys that are growing up into men to know that, okay, this is not jump, just something that is limited to women to do. Mm -hmm. We are in partnership. And so we have to work as partners. Yeah. Uh, nobody is way better or oh, less, less than, than anybody. Than anyone, yeah. So we have to stand on an equal, equal ground and be able to lift each other up as we journey this life. Because if we do that, I think all of the vices that we're going through right now, mm -hmm. uh, will be eradicated if not less lessened mm -hmm. yeah yeah um i am hopeful like i said the future is going to be bright with all um powerful women who are striving for excellence each and every single day and i think you will all agree with me that education is um going to be the tool for that because education is like the most powerful weapon to development and girls empowerment girls upliftment girls education is also one of the most effective ways to nation building you've all you've had my guest speakers mention it when you educate a woman you educate a nation because the woman is the mother she is the head of the family i mean when it comes to developing the children and now women are financially stronger you know and they their heads in that aspect as well so i think um change the change will happen and it's gonna happen slowly but surely it will happen and now the final question um we really cannot talk about women and define women and not talk about men because like you said it's a collaboration we have to uplift each other in this so how do you think men should be able to um, treat their women and how should women as well treat their men and what is missing in that now um yeah what do you guys think yeah i think men should treat women equally how they want to be treated. Uh, 
Mm. I mean, if you want to be pampered, if you want to be respected, mm-hmm. if you want to be heard, you need to understand women want the same desires. Mm-hmm. They want to be treated exactly the same. Yeah. They want to be respected. They want to be heard. They want to be pampered. Mm-hmm. They want to be loved and cared for. Yeah. And they need they want to be protected just like we are protecting you all. Mm-hmm. So this is exactly what we need from men. We want them to also support us with what we want. Mm-hmm. Don't be the first to jump and say you are a woman, you shouldn't be doing this. You yeah. are a woman, your place is the kitchen. Right. Or you are a woman, you should be quiet. Be the first man to stand up and say, "Oh, I respect what you want and I will support you and I'll be by your side." Mm-hmm. In that way, we can all grow together and support one another and understand mm-hmm. and respect each other's desires mm-hmm. uh when it comes to of course desires mm-hmm. i mean most of the time men are more in demand i mean or in need of uh satisfaction mm-hmm. but we also want satisfaction that yeah. is why we want our men to also know what we want mm-hmm. When we are not in the mood, we are not in the mood. When mm. we are tired, we are tired. That yeah. means we don't want it. We when don't we want say it. No, it's a no. It means no. Yeah. And that needs to be respected. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't mean anytime you want it then you will have it. Yeah. I mean, if that understanding is there and it still comes down to education mm-hmm. and the mindset being changed. Yeah. Today earlier I was just mentioning this somewhere else uh that we can be all educated go to university have a masters and mm-hmm. still not be educated. Yeah. When your mindset is still not changed towards mm-hmm. certain things that are affecting human beings mm-hmm. including women, then you are still not educated. Yeah, I don't want to cut you but I yes. want to say something <laughs> to that. I um that it's very important you mentioned that. I know educated women who are married and they feel like it's a blessing for their husbands to still beat them like literally physically beat them. <laughs> And and that is insane. I'm like you are educated. You know he's hurting you. Why will you allow him to beat you? Because it's a blessing. Your children will be blessed. I don't understand that. Because that is what they were meant to believe growing up and this sticks in your head that mm-hmm. it takes forever for it to be you know just cleared out or for you to get away with it. It's mm-hmm. like the way people are holding on to this cultural practices that yeah. affects us. I've seen women who are highly educated but yeah. they still believe that their girls will be caught yeah. because they feel tradition is part of their life. Mm-hmm. Not just in fact religion but for them the tradition is what makes them human is that that is what makes them women. Mm-hmm. So um I think it all comes down to still having more of these type of discussions. Mm-hmm. Those of us who know go back home let's teach our family members let's teach our neighbors mm-hmm. our friends yeah. and gradually um i think the mindsets will change mm-hmm. i don't stop talking i on radio these are some of the topics that i bring on board just to, to hear to people's feedbacks yeah. mm-hmm. and at the end of the day we all get to when page or they get to understand where you're coming from mm-hmm. and of course um as men i mean uh women we mm-hmm. Like like I was saying this is what we want from our men mm-hmm. and um I hope men will be able to stand by us and support us mm-hmm. and be there for us be com- you know be our company be our be our friends yeah. that's what we want we mm-hmm. don't want especially when it comes to feminism we're not against any men exactly. men are not our competitors <laughs> right. they're not uh, we don't hate you mm-hmm. we want you to support us to love us to be there for us mm-hmm. we don't have to beg for this mm-hmm. this has to happen naturally mm-hmm. i've seen couple who have never hold hands their entire life mm-hmm. where is the emotion you know mm-hmm. how are you going to be able to have that connection with that human at the end of the day. Yeah. So I mean for me this is this is what really my expectations are from men. Well, great. Mm-hmm. I think it's <laughs> Um it's not a competition. It is a collaboration. We are we are doing this together. Um yeah. we cannot do it alone. Um Ms. Ocha, what do you think? Yeah, so respect is number one because mm-hmm. if you don't respect the other person, you don't value them uh or give them the worth that they this like that is worthy of them. Mm-hmm. So when you think a woman is less than then disrespect comes in right away because mm-hmm. you don't see them doing anything other than what you fit them to be. So mm-hmm. if you say a woman should be a mother or a housewife at home mm-hmm. then if a woman wants to work and earn their own living that is something that is against your yeah. own definition and mm-hmm. so you want to 
bring them back. I've seen people who were working and then they got married and then because the husband doesn't want them to be they start earning to money, they say you have to sit home. Yeah. So I think being able to have these conversations as women to let the men in our lives know exactly what we want from a very early age instead mm-hmm. of saying, well, he will understand eventually. If you don't communicate what you need from a man, then mm-hmm. at the end of the day, all of the things that you were dreading to happen will eventually come and catch up with you. Mm-hmm. You have conflict between yourselves and then marriages will end because of that. Mm-hmm. Because you, in as much as you're a woman, you're a mother, you're a wife, mm-hmm. you are so much more. Yeah. You have passions, you have a career you that you want dreams. to pursue. You have yeah. dreams. You yeah. want to travel to mm-hmm. uh, places yeah. and maybe make connections that your man or the person you're in partnership with doesn't understand. Yeah. So being able to express those things from a very early age will bring into perspective. So if the man agrees to that, then you guys can work towards it. If it doesn't, you know that even if you agree to the situation, then mm-hmm. eventually things are bound to happen that will eventually come and make the relationship uh, devastating for the both of you. Mm-hmm. And so um, women, men should be able to listen to women. Mm-hmm. And because sometimes... You talk and then they say, yes, <laughs> oh, I hear you. Yeah. But when you hear somebody, what is the actions that follows that thing? Yeah. So you, if I tell you I don't like this or I don't want to do this, mm-hmm. if you force me and you already told me I hear you, then what is the point? You did not hear me. You did not hear me at <laughs> yeah. all. You just say it for the sake of letting me know that you heard what I said. Mm-hmm. So hearing somebody and acting upon, upon that uh action Mm -hmm. and then hearing somebody just for the sake of hearing somebody is something that is uh, totally different Mm -hmm. and so most marriages or even relationships that is the issue we Mm -hmm. just listen to somebody because we want to be out of that situation at the very end and in the long run we do things that are totally contradict what what we said uh, we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So um, respecting us, hearing us, and knowing that we have boundaries, Mm -hmm. we have uh, passions outside of marriage, we have passions outside of just being a housewife Mm -hmm. and then we are we should be able to do and explore all of those things Mm -hmm. without being limited and without being uh, restricted to doing those things is something that is very important Mm -hmm. and so uh, when a woman is successful it doesn't take away anything from a man and men should be able to understand that it's an addition Uh, yes when we are successful we're not trying to put you down or make you any less of a person. Mm -hmm. You have your own worth and whatever I do with my life or however much I achieve as a woman Mm -hmm. does not take away from you. And you as a man, if you achieve whatever that is you achieve, it's not going to take away from my being a woman or my womanhood. So we have to be able to understand those two things and Mm -hmm. be able to work together as partners. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't do that, then problems are going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to label women as as strong-headed as somebody who is not respectful Mm -hmm. but then are you respecting us in the first place Mm -hmm. and so we have to look at it both way both ways and be able to uh, work together Mm -hmm. and so men let's women also should be able to give men the same respect and regard because uh, if you expect something from uh, the other gender and you're not following through with that it contradicts and it brings about problems so We have to be able to understand that each and each, each and every one of us has needs. Yeah. Uh, we have a life that we want to live. We have desires that we want to fulfill. Mm-hmm. And so being able to understand that and communicate it clearly to our partners mm-hmm. and having them understand that, okay, this does not take away from me as mm-hmm. an individual. If yeah. I support this person, get to where, where they want to, mm-hmm. it's going to make things so much better yeah. for each and every one of us. And mm-hmm. I hope that... Uh, Everybody out there, be it woman or man, uh, mm-hmm. as you listen to uh, this conversation today, that it triggers you to really think through your life, think about things that you want to do and be mm-hmm. able to sit down, your partner mm-hmm. or your father or your uncle, whoever it is, the male person in your life, and be able to communicate these things clearly. Mm-hmm. Because if you do that, first they might challenge you and then say, well, you're crazy or all of those things. Mm-hmm. But push through uh, with courtesy. Uh, eventually, if they realize that, okay, You're not budging. This is something that you really want and you are heading forward uh, with it. Mm -hmm. Then they will eventually come around and support you because parents will disown you when you say you want to do certain things. And then they say you're successful at at it and then they come back. So (laughs) you just have to believe in yourself and then push forward Mm -hmm. and understand that in partnerships, people want different things. And the medium where each person comes together and say, I will support you get 
to the place you want to go to mm -hmm. is the understanding that you need to have. Yeah. And when you do that, uh, things work out perfectly. All right. I think we've exhausted this. <laughs> um, we've all had what is missing. What is missing is empathy. What is missing is support. What is missing is respect. Um, passion and friendship and all of that. So I hope as you all listen to this podcast today, you are able to put in this, the, the right amount of energy to make your relationship work, the right amount of energy to make your families work. Because what we put in, the energy we put into the universe is the same energy we get from it. So I hope we will all put in the right energy. So um, um, the final pillar of the Starfish podcast is our quotation session and we are going to read a quotation to end this session with and our guests will also have the time to um, share their final words and maybe share a little bit about what they think about this quotation and it goes um, so this quotation is about women and since today the discussion is about womanhood and defining women we um, think to quote the strong women who have written this quote and it goes we need women who are so strong they can be gentle so educated, they can be humble, so fierce, they can be compassionate, so passionate, they can be rational, and so disciplined, they can be free. Um, so this quotation, I think it's a powerful way to end this session because it, it says it all. It kind of summarizes all of the things we said today. And so I'm just going to give my guest speakers a minute to tell the world one thing they want the world to know about women today as they celebrate women. Uh, so my one thing will be that we are limitless beings mm -hmm. and uh, we should not be put in a box and expected mm -hmm. to stay there right. because the era of staying in that box is done and done with. We are moving forward and fighting for the things that we believe in, the things that we want to create for the future generation to come as well. Mm -hmm. Because as we work this journey and as we fight the struggles that we're facing with as a women, mm -hmm. we're not just doing it for ourselves. In the long run, it will benefit generations to come. Mm -hmm. And so um, whoever is out there that wants to partner with, with us and help us get to where we're headed, mm -hmm. you're welcome. Mm -hmm. If you want to stand there as an obstacle, uh, be sure that we will fight through that obstacle and eventually get to uh, our, our end goal as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Nicely said, Miss <laughs> Polly. Uh, yes, all I would say is just like the quote ended, be free, mm -hmm. do what makes you happy, do what makes you feel alive as mm -hmm. a human, not just as a woman. Mm -hmm. Be yourself and explore the world. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you want to do and spread your, your wings, you know, uh, don't limit yourself, mm -hmm. you know, like my sister just mentioned. Do as much as you can. I mean, anybody who knows me knows that I am into so many things. I've mm -hmm. never limited myself. I'm into acting, I'm into media, mm -hmm. and so much more. Uh, this is just to prove to other people that you can be more than one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, don't allow society to cage you up, to tell you this is all you can do and this is what you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So that is all I'll leave with everyone. And as much as I love creative storytelling through mo movies and, and theater and plays, mm -hmm. I love to hear stories also that are really warm in my heart and gives me hope for the future. And you all just did that. I'm really and inspired. You did that I'm really inspired. I'm here. I'm like, wow, this is so powerful. Yeah. So I encourage all young women out there and young boys to spread their wings and teach each other how to love, teach mm -hmm. each other how to be there for each other. Mm -hmm. Let's not just teach women, but let's teach our young boys how to become responsible men in the future who are willing to protect their women and their children in the future as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. This is what the Staff is International podcast is about. We are going to be contributing to the discussions of the society, talk about issues that are affecting us as youth and young leaders and young women, and solutions to these issues that are affecting us as people and human beings and women as well. Um, so we've come to the very end of the program. I just want to remind everyone that is listening, especially women, that you can be only two things, who you are and who you want to be. And I will say it's a choice. Be you and be free. Until we see you again um, every other Saturday, it's a bye from Starfish. Stay tuned.